In this video, we're gonna talk about understanding contracts and negotiations as a new real estate agent. It might be exciting to get your first client and make an offer, but what do you do next? What do you have to prepare yourself for as a new agent to be able to get the deal to the closing line? Well, I've been a real estate agent for the past nine years. I started at 22 years old. At this point in time, I am a real estate team leader. I have a team of nine agents, including myself, and two transaction coordinators. So I know what it's like to start from zero as someone that was 22 years old to get into the business and someone that just felt confused. So in this video, my goal is to dive into that so you know exactly what to expect and kind of help you get through this process of getting your first client and getting them to the closing table. My name is Chris with the Empire Real Estate YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about real estate, personal finance, and building your real estate empire through real estate entrepreneurship. Before we dive into the video, I do want to tell you about our new agent academy. We just launched this academy. Inside, you'll find trainings, live group coaching every month, and you're also gonna find a lot of agents that are looking to grow their real estate business as well that you can connect with and talk to on a regular basis. There's also an app through school that you're gonna be able to use on your phone if you wanna go in there and ask questions and interact throughout your real estate day. So be sure to check that out in the description down below and join our group today. So you got your real estate license and maybe you just found your first client. At this point, you might be out showing them houses and you're just at that stage where you're gonna start making offers, going under contract, and really getting into it to get your deal under contract, closed, and hopefully make your first commission. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about some of the things to look out for and to expect as a brand new agent so you can keep your clients safe and you can get this deal to the finish line smoothly as possible and you can deliver a lot of value to your client as someone that's brand new in the industry. First things first, I wanna go over some basic contract clauses and things that you're gonna to have to know in most markets and you're gonna to have to explain to your clients. Now, again, make sure as a new agent, if they have any legal questions, you're referring them to an attorney any legal advice can't be done by us. We're real estate agents, we're not legal attorneys. So that's one thing that I wanna definitely make note of. And that's something that I tell my team all the time. If it's a legal question and you're not sure about it, or if it's a legal question in general, never give legal advice. We're not attorneys, okay? That's the first thing. That's a good way to lose your license. So never, 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 never do that. But with that being said, uh, there are some terms that you're gonna have to know and you're gonna have to explain as part of a standard purchase and sales agreement. So the very first one is the home inspection contingency. So as a new agent, you wanna advise your clients whether they're gonna do a home inspection or they're not gonna do a home inspection. In most markets, they're gonna have 10 days to conduct a home inspection. This is 10 business days. It excludes weekends and holidays. And if they wanna do home inspections, they can put that in their offer. If they don't wanna do home inspections, you also wanna put that in the offer because that can be a selling point to a potential seller that might accept their offer, right? After that, another clause to look out for is the mortgage commitment date. Now, this mortgage commitment date is something that also keeps their deposit protected. If they go past that mortgage commitment date and they get declined or they don't close in the house and they have a commitment, then they can potentially lose their deposit. If they don't go past that mortgage commitment date, which is usually about 30 days, you always wanna check with your loan officer before you put a commitment date on the sales agreement. But if they don't go past that commitment date and they get declined for whatever reason, then they should get their deposit back in most cases. So these are things that you wanna know and be able to advise your client on. So you, it's called a mortgage contingency clause and a home inspection contingency clause. Now, these are basic questions that you wanna ask, but they are important because these are two big milestones in the transaction. Another thing you wanna ask is when you're gonna be submitting your artist money deposit. Is it as soon as the purchase and sales agreement is signed, or is that gonna be done after they conduct their home inspection, or is it a mixture of both? Do they get their half of their deposit when they sign the initial sales agreement, and then the other half after they go through home inspections? How is this going to be laid out? Now, these are all basic questions. Along with that, you wanna go through when they're gonna close, what the projected closing date is gonna be. Again, this is something that you wanna to talk to your lenders about and figure out like how long they're actually gonna to need to get this thing to the closing table. 
Um, I would expect anywhere on the low end, 30 days, on the high end, 60 days. Some lenders can do it sooner, some can do it, some take a little bit longer. But this is something that you're want, gonna wanna communicate with your lender about and then help advise the client on a realistic timeline. The next thing I wanna talk about is strategies for effective negotiation and communication with other real estate agents. So if you're working with buyers, it's important to reach out to the agent before you make an offer and figure out what is important to that seller. You wanna ask basic questions like, what's the most important thing to that seller? Do they need to move sooner? Do they need more time to move? Is it subject to them finding suitable housing? Can we accommodate that? Um, is the most important thing to them the price? Or is it just an easy transaction where they're not gonna want home inspections and a lot of things negotiated? Do they want an as-is sale? These are all questions to ask because you wanna craft your offer to the best ability you can to fit that seller's needs to give your client the highest chance of getting that house, especially if it's a multiple offer situation. If it's a multiple offer situation, you're gonna be in competition against other agents and other buyers, and you wanna give your buyer the best shot of getting that house. Now, I do wanna to talk to you about some different tips to present your offer. Now, it's important to present your offer in a very clear, concise way. This is the biggest thing, because if the listing agent is flooded with offers, then they're going to be in a situation where they have to pick out the offer that best fits the seller. And you wanna make it easy as possible because you wanna show the seller and you wanna show the agent that you're gonna be good to work with. You're gonna be someone that makes this transaction smoother, not harder. So I would suggest preparing your offer on a purchase and sales agreement, putting the pre-approval in there, outlining everything, and then also using some kind of an offer letter template. Our team uses one. It's a basic template in Canva. It has the agent's image on it. It has their contact information on it. Then it has all the important points of the offer. So if you do wanna check this template out, we do have a store with templates. There's a, a link down below where you can actually grab that. But use something like this. This can be done very inexpensively. You can even create this your own in can on your own in Canva if you want to. But you definitely wanna use things like this to set yourself apart and present yourself in a way that's gonna show people that you're easy to work with and you're gonna make this transaction a lot smoother and a lot easier. The next thing is handling conflicts and trying to smooth the transaction over. So not every transaction is gonna be super smooth. And the key to overcoming these conflicts is basically being a strong communicator. Now, if things go wrong in a transaction, you wanna get involved right away. You wanna have clear communication with your client, whether you're the listing agent or the buyer's agent, and you want to lay out all the possible outcomes and then help guide that client to make the right choice for them. You never wanna make choices for a client before talking to them. That's one huge lesson that I learned early on in real estate is you never wanna do that. Never speak for a client, always gather information, present the information, outline all the pros and cons of each decision that they could potentially make and then let them make that choice. Because again, we are real estate agents and in some cases real estate brokers and we broker transactions. It's not our transaction to make the decision on. We are just helping them and we're advising them to make the correct choice for them. That's one key distinction that you're gonna to have to know. And if you do this, you'll keep yourself out of trouble. If you don't do this, then you could get yourself in some pretty deep water. Another important note to make is to always be ethical, right? You never wanna lie, you never wanna deceive, or you never wanna manipulate. We always have to represent our client in the best capacity that we can, but we can't lie or manipulate situations. That's just not a good idea. That's a quick, quick way to lose your real estate license and get involved with the lawsuits. Over the past nine years, I've never had any issues because I'm always straightforward, I'm always straight, I'm always honest, and I'm always ethical. And that's something that you should put into your business right away. Even if it's hard conversations that you don't want to have, you always have to be straight with people, you always have to be honest, and you always have to be ethical. Because if you don't have that foundation, you're not gonna last in this business very long. This business is highly competitive and the general public doesn't really love realtors to begin with. So because of that, if you put yourself in these bad situations by cutting corners and not being honest, you're probably gonna end up in some pretty nasty lawsuits and you probably won't be doing this for too long. So drop it in the comment section below. What things are you struggling with as a new agent? I wanna hear from you. Drop it in the comment section. I'll be in touch soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching the Empire of Real Estate YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about real estate and entrepreneurship. So if you like that kind of content and you haven't subscribed yet, smash the like button and subscribe. And before we go, there isn't a video over here that we think you'll like. So be sure to check that out as well. Thanks so much for tuning in and you have a great day.